Good morning guys! So, we unfortunately have to leave our boondocking spot here. If you missed our last vlog, check it out because we found this boondocking spot just ourselves on Google Maps and finding forest service roads in the Port Alberta area. It's so beautiful! It's just like this overgrown clear cut and a little spot to park the RV there. And seriously, it's so nice out here. There's birds everywhere. Really nice. But the perks of leaving this boondocking spot is today we get to check into a provincial park campground at Sprout Lake. It looks really, really nice and the weather's supposed to be really good today. So we may even get the inflatable kayak on the lake. Who knows? But we're gonna pack up here and make our way over there. Is there any way or do you <laughs> so I know I say it like every time, but I swear this campsite is the most like secluded and by itself campsite that we've had so far. Well, this whole area is just ours, obviously, in our campsite. And then through the trees, you can kind of see where like the garbage and the outhouses are. But then there's nobody else here. The closest person that we have to us is across the road there but we've kind of the way that we've parked our RV we didn't just just like back and straight into the site here the way that we've parked our RV it kind of blocks them off so it's a really cool area when we were first driving down the road we saw our campsite and it was like oh man that's gonna be a sketchy spot to back into luckily it all worked out pretty well but check this so when we were driving down the road view so you're motoring along you're like oh that looks like a pretty nice campsite to back into and then you're driving down the road and then you're like, oh man, look at these big trees over here in this tight little corner. Ah, oh, 16, that's us. And it was like, oh no. But, do, 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 do. in the end, it worked out pretty good. Hey, and it looks like cats outside over there too. As soon as we parked, she basically ran to jump out the door. So, might as well get her outside and let her settle in right away too. You didn't even have a big drive today, you stinker. Lucky girl. So at Sprout Lake Provincial Park, there's actually two separate campgrounds. We're in the upper campground and there's actually a lower one as well. I don't know how long the walk is down to like the lower part that also has the beach access, but we're heading that way now, so we'll find out. Oh sweet, it's only 700 meters. Petroglyphs up here, so we're gonna take a short walk up and see them. You know, one thing that's cool about Vancouver Island I wanted to share as well, and I haven't yet surprisingly, is Arbutus trees. I don't know if you guys have seen Arbutuses before, or if you have them where you live, maybe down in Washington, maybe you have them, but it's right behind me here. Look how cool that bark is, it's like a golden tint. And they're super smooth and they're shiny. I love those trees, they're so cool. Anyways, back to trying to find the petroglyphs. I found someone that spray painted high on the wall, but I don't think that was the petroglyph, so the hunt continues. So far, the closest thing to a petroglyph I found is Grad 09, but I don't think that's older than maybe 11 years, I have a feeling. So, we found the petroglyphs and they were a little underwhelming. The Grad 09 popped out a little bit more, let's say, but on the way back, 
found a crazy snake. Check this guy out. Whoa, look at that dude. Oh, he's doing the tongue thing. Crikey! That's a snake right there. Oh, he's on the move. Oh, crikey, would you look at that guy? No, he ain't. He's a timid little gardener, this fella here. He don't mean to harm nobody. Ooh, look at those scales. Ooh. I'm sorry in advance to all you people out there that don't enjoy snakes. So somebody is feeling a little crazy. That's me. He's jumping in the lake. <laughs> Usually, oh, look at that white tan lines. Oh, I'm sorry guys. But it should be a warm lake. It's not gonna be like Waitabit Creek. Flashback to when I jumped in the river. But let's go for a splish splash. Don't move, but there's a little salamander behind that rock too. Dun, dun. Look at that dude. Well, that was a super enjoyable, super hot, super nice day at the beach. So nice. If you would have told me I was jumping in the lake today this morning, I'd be like, no. Wow. I'm actually like fairly jealous that I didn't bring my bathing suit or anything because yeah, the lake was actually a really good temperature. And from the beach too, you could see the famous Martin Mars bomber. Yeah, that was a nice bonus. I think it's one of the biggest in the world, the biggest water bombers in the world. And it's hardly used anymore in BC because it can only go, it can only pick up water from like 113 lakes in BC. So, it's very limited on where it can actually fit. It's so big. Yeah, so they use a lot more smaller ones now and they go up to like mountain lakes and stuff and grab water, but pretty dang cool. I also gave Luke a flower in his hair. How cute. Ravishing. We just played a game of crib after dinner. That was a crazy one. We both had such big hands. Alicia's very first hand, she got 18 points, which is quite a bit in crib. And then about halfway through the game, I had almost the same hand, but with a better card flip than she had. And I got a 22 point hand. Whew, big points and a good time. So we're gonna finish that up here and pack up. And then we're gonna do a campfire in a little bit. We only have a little bit of firewood left packed for us. So we're gonna try and do what we can with that and maybe make some kind of toasty s'mores type things. We'll see what we get up to, but campfire night. All right, so the fire's rolling and we're having dessert. It's been so long since we've made these like campfire toasty things. And so we're gonna go to town. We got bananas, chocolate, peanut butter. Luke's putting marshmallows, marshmallows. in Marshmallows. It's gonna be real good. Yeah, we only had a little bit of firewood left, but we managed to get a good hot base going. Lined them up, stacked them tight for a nice solid pieces of firewood. And then I got a few wet pieces of maybe spruce. When we were boondocking last night at that cool site there, there was this like this long piece of wood and I really wanted to split it, but I hit it. My ax sunk in and all the moisture like oozed out and it went all the way in, but I didn't want to let it get away without getting split a little bit. So I took a side piece off and now on top of the fire grill, I have my little strips. And then hopefully the fire will dry out that wood and we can burn that wood last at the end of the night. Just a little nightcap. That's my thinking at least. But dessert's made more exciting. Let's get back to dessert. My 
Mine's ready to go. <laughs> Mine's not. <laughs> more, more, more. All right, here's the plan. Peanut butter, chocolate chips, bananas, marshmallow. Sounds good. Let's see what turns out in reality. Usually I always mess this up and just make a mess more than anything, so. They're finished cooking! Now to land the plating. <laughs> Waboom! Slam dunk. Me too. Oh, landed it. <laughs> this is the best we've done, I think, in the last few times we've tried. Yeah. It actually worked out. Would you look at that? Mmm. It's really hot, so I'm gonna wait a minute. Bon appetit, as the French would say. Pink. Oh, 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 hot. Oh, hot. Oh, oh, hot. Mm -hmm. Oh, hot. That's really good. All right, well, we're gonna clean up our mess here and then head to bed. Yep, we'll see you guys in the morning at the day area. See ya. All right, and hello, guys. So we had mentioned yesterday that we were going to hit up the day use area at Sprout Lake Campground there and just hang out for the day, hopefully take the kayak out and stuff. We did go there, however it's very overcast and a little drizzly today so it wasn't great swimming or kayaking weather. So we did just stay in the parking lot and walk around a bit and just catch up on some work stuff and all that kind of stuff in the RV. And then we're back here now in Port Alberni because... Well, we'll get to that in a minute, but we did have to stop at Walmart and get some groceries because we were desperately in need of some groceries. Our fridge was empty, our cupboards were empty, so we probably got the biggest grocery haul we ever have in the RV. We spent a lot of money and got a lot of stuff, so I thought that we'd maybe like show you what we got in case you're interested. Maybe, maybe not, but yeah, let's do that now. So as you can see, a lot of groceries here. So we got some milk here. Red onions, we've got some pepperoni, we got some of this dill dip. This is so good with like carrots or broccoli and it's made with I think Greek yogurt. So good. We got a butternut squash, some taco shells. Luke also got a couple of soups to make for lunch when he needs to fend for himself. We got some minced garlic. And I got this steak seasoning because I'm going to try making some black bean and portobello mushroom burgers and then I'm going to add some like steak seasoning to make it taste kind of like hamburger. It's going to be good. And the black beans to go with that. We got some buns for those black bean burgers I was talking about and some bread. We got these really yummy, we've had these before, they're um, veggie chips, very good. We got some shredded cheese. Some crackers for our hummus. Luke got some granola bars. Eggs. I got this spaghetti. I'm trying out this smart spaghetti. I don't know, really know what's different, but it says it's healthier, so I'm gonna try it out. Got a big bag of carrots. Ooh, yeah. We got this frozen wild caught salmon. So there's just two big fillets in here and I'm super excited for this because I love salmon so much and I really like to get the fresh salmon in like the deli area, I guess, but it's pretty expensive. And this is only $10 for two big fillets, so excited. We also got some tuna, it's a good go-to. We got some more of these Uncle Ben's. Um, it's like two servings in a pouch and you just heat it up and eat it and so you don't need to really cook anything So it's really nice when like you're on the road for a while and you need like a dinner, but You don't want to cook anything <laughs> pretty good We also got some chickpeas and some of these pickles because we're gonna make um, It's like a mashed chickpea Mayonnaise pickle kind of like salad thing like a 
faux chicken salad and it's really good on bread for like a sandwich so so good we got this humongous bag of broccoli florets because we've been really really enjoying broccoli salad lately and actually pretty much always enjoyed it so <laughs> definitely gonna be using this up for some broccoli salad got a big bag of spinach and this mixture I think it's Broccoli, carrots, red cabbage, kohlrabi, and cauliflower. So this is a really easy addition to like a stir fry or we've been making like egg roll in a bowl. So we'll probably use this and that and it's really convenient, really easy instead of chopping it all up. Tasty. We also got some ground chicken breast to go with that mixture there to make our egg roll in a bowl. I got this huge bag of black cherries because probably my second favorite fruit and they're so good and they're only around for like probably a, a month or month and a half maybe two months and then they're gone and out of season so taking full advantage of black cherries and we also got some raspberries because this is my all-time favorite fruit and last but not least we got some motor oil because well for the past probably day, Luke has been trying to figure out some RV maintenance stuff and oil change and air filter change and stuff and I think he's going to Lorca later to get some stuff for that so he'll probably talk about that later but we got some oil. Anyways, you guys might be wondering why we're back in Port Alberni after we just finished leaving it to Sprout Lake. With the whole coronavirus situation, a lot of the national parks reservation sites have been down but Green Point National Park, which is located just near Tofino, we were hoping to spend three, maybe four nights there because it's the only camps that we've come across so far out here that A, would have had electrical, and B, would have been located in a super prime area. It would have been right in the middle of Tofino to the north and Yakulet to the south, which are both super popular areas, and there's not really any other camping near there. So hopefully tomorrow morning we're going to wake up at like 6.45 and then we're going to see if we can reserve a national park site but it was pretty booked before the site even went down so it's going to be kind of hard. Worst case we're going to go out that way anyways tomorrow, go to Tofino and Yakulet, some of the most popular spots on all of Vancouver Island if not the most popular I'd say and then when we're out there we'll find a forest service road if we have to but fingers crossed we can actually have electrical hookup this time. And I guess we'll find out in the morning. As for sitting outside the RV here right now, I was gonna A, change the generator's oil, and then B, I was gonna clean out the spark arrestor, which is basically a plug you take out by the generator's muffler and it blasts out any soot and extra stuff that's accumulated in there. And wouldn't you guess my mechanical luck, as you guys must know from me by now or something, but the one plug in the spark arrestor, they didn't have to use a regular socket, of course, they used a square or a four point socket. I tried to get a wrench in there, but it's up in the pan, in the kind of the generator area, so you can only come in from one spot. It's super rusted, so instead of loosening, it's stripped. I tried hammering a socket onto it. We tried basically everything I could think of. We couldn't come to any solution, so I'm gonna try and get like one of those easy grip or easy go kind of things that has teeth on it maybe and see if that can grip onto it. I tried and tried and tried and it's basically become a circle instead of a square at this point. So that's been a huge pain and was really frustrating because if it would have been a normal socket, it would have been like a couple minute job. So okay, no spark arrestor. And then tonight we went and bought some oil down in Walmart here and then I was gonna change the oil. So the oil socket is being covered by a metal flap that has two torque screws in it but you guessed it, I climbed down in there and both of those torque screws are super rusted as well. So I think I probably stripped those holes. We're gonna have to probably break the bolts off, will be the best bet. We're gonna go to Lord Co at some point and see if they have any solutions. But good news is we're going to Tofino and you cool it and life goes on. And you're all here with us, which we super appreciate. So big thanks to you guys for tuning into the video here and watching with us. Be sure to give the video a like if you wanna show us some support. We really appreciate that. And if not, we will catch you all in the next video. We are off to Tofino and you kill it. Say goodnight to Walmart because we'll be leaving it behind for a bit here. And we'll catch you in the next video, friends. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, bye.